Hello everyone, this is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. And welcome to the greatest show on earth. Yes, it's finally here. Game day. I know you've all been waiting for it, and I'm glad to finally deliver the next Howard Dare video. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm of course, you know, talking about um, the Super Bowl, right? Sports, football, American football. The greatest sport on earth. And in my opinion, the only real sport on earth. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's there's lots of other sports, and uh, you know, but but this is the big show. And Barbarossa did a video where he he mentioned the idea that media, government, the authoritative establishments of our system want men to identify with sports teams, and that we're not really part of the team. It's just kind of like a it's just kind of like a mind trick where the man's attention and loyalties get diverted from where they should be. Now, that being said, you know, I have I, I like sports, I like entertainment, I like competition, but becoming obsessed year round permanently, there's a danger there. But here's the thing. I, I'm not really talking about football. I'm talking about the greatest show on earth. And I'm of course talking about the Howard Dare video. No. I'm talking about the commercials, and I'm not even talking about the commercials, right? I'm talking about the values that are promoted within the commercials, and that's gynocentrism. That's worshiping women. That is worshiping money. That is competing with other men to become the champion in order to win the woman. That's the model. That's what's going on. That's what's being advertised. And the appeals within the advertisements come from all different sorts of levels. But it's all basically the same thing. If you want to be a real man, you'll buy this car. If you want to be a real man, you'll protect the woman. If you want to be a real man, you'll be materially successful. If you want to be a real man, you'll buy and endorse and believe in this product. And, you know, that's the basic advertising message behind a lot of this stuff. And it's using the woman's um, attention and affection as the as the bait and the hook, you know, and it's it's going after the male attention is what it's going after, or rather the male purchasing power, the male energy and the female, you know, attention and buying power as well. But you can use the female to manipulate the male, right? You have to know that someone like Frank Sinatra, you know, and I'm, I'm really showing my age here, huh? Yeah, that's right. I'm over 100 years old. Uh, in, his, in the early part of his career, he was paying young teenage girls to go to his concerts and to scream. Of course. Why not? He goes into a town. You know, he's having an event. Why not go to the high school and hire the girls to go to the concert and scream and, you know, do all of that? And once they do that, the other ones will follow along. So there's a lot of social pressure going on here. And you know, I want you guys to pay attention to it and to see it and to look past, to be able to look past the attempts at manipulating your attention and to recognize what they are manipulating your attention for. In other words, you know, buy this car, buy this soft drink, play this game. Yeah, that, that's what they're doing. But why are they doing it? They're doing it to make money? Okay, fair enough. How are they going to make money through all of this? They're going to make money through all of this by you as a man giving them your attention and then attaching some sort of value to what they're saying based on this image that they're going to create and put in your mind. That's the game. That's the greatest show on earth. With that, okay, you can take the life of a man and turn it into just some fan who watches a television show. He won't do anything. He won't build anything. He won't discover anything. He won't have any personal revelations. He'll just be a consumer. He'll be a good consumer. And that's what our society is trying to do. It's trying to create good consumers, citizens who do as they're told to government authority. And it's not even, it doesn't even have to be some nefarious conspiracy. It merely needs to be the alignment of large financial powerful interests. That's it. There doesn't have to be some complex web behind all of it. It's just that the people with money and the people in power want to continue to stay in power and they want to continue to make more money. And the people who are not in power and who do not make money, who are essentially slaves to the system, they want to be kept in that place, in that position. And men need to break out. Men need to go MGTOW to find their freedom, to find their purpose in life.
Unless you think that your purpose in life is serving a woman, doing as you're told, doing your job. And when I mean, when I say your job, I mean a job for somebody else. You know, something that somebody else is telling you to do. Because yeah, doing your job in life might be one of, you know, your main purposes in life. But working for somebody else, that's not, you know, your job in life. Your job is to build yourself up to see through the bullshit and to do the things necessary to build up yourself, to not be trapped into some sort of fan worship, to not be trapped into some retarded political movement that has really nothing to do with you. And let me bring up Trump, okay? I might as well make a section, you know, in all of my videos where, you know, and let me bring up Trump. But the choice in the previous election was not between Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and you with, you know, perfect wisdom. It was a choice between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. That was the choice. You were not involved in this choice. You know what I mean? We didn't have the choice of perfection. This is something that I want, especially you younger MGTOWs, to understand, okay? Is that sometimes you're choosing between a three-foot pile of shit and a six-foot pile of shit. And I hope you're going to choose the three-foot pile of shit, right? So then somebody comes along, they find you standing in a three-foot pile of shit. And they say, why did you choose that? And the answer is because the other choice was a six-foot pile of shit. And if you don't choose, somebody else is going to put you head first into the six-foot pile. So that's not an option either. So anybody who's talking shit about Trump, just remember what your choice was. Just remember what this conflict was. It's like, oh, well, he's not perfect. So who is? Who the hell is perfect? You know, I don't like this idea of condemning someone's ideas, their personality, what they've got to say based on what someone else perceives as a minor character flaw. In other words, okay, Isaac Newton, well, he wasn't the best friend. You know, he, he wasn't a real close buddy. He didn't always look out for other guys' backs. He was pretty much of a loner. So I guess that means his, you know, theory of gravity is bullshit. And the motion of planets is bullshit. It's like, what, are you retarded? No, his theories are just fine. The fact that you didn't agree with something about him personally, you know. So this is why I say, whatever your beef is with Isaac Newton, put it aside and move on. Because he's been dead for hundreds of years, right? But some people are like, no, I want to talk about Isaac Newton. I'm just joking, right? You understand that I'm using Isaac Newton as a metaphor, huh? <laughs> Yeah, you understand that. Some of you understand that. Some of you don't understand that. And I got to be honest with you, that's that's funny too, right? <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, the show, the game is to get the male attention. And when you get it, a whole series of chemical reactions start taking place inside of the men. And they tend to bond to these kind of experiences. That's why, you know, at the height of the moment, that's when you want to run the commercial. You know, you want to bring it to a feverish pitch and then whatever you suggest at that moment is just going to associate itself with those other feelings. So, you know, when a touchdown is scored, they're going to flash Doritos across the stadium you know, so that when everybody jumps up and has that feeling, you know, they're thinking, oh, Doritos, they're associating the two together. So you see the pretty girl and you see the car together. You see the, you know, conquering hero and you know, in the background, they're talking about their product. And that's just basic level stuff. That's just basic advertising stuff, you know. And the more glamorous and enthralling that the images are, that you can feel, the more um, entranced and associated you're going to be with it. So when the product is then mentioned, you're going to associate all those other feelings of George Washington with the product. But at the deeper level, it is, of course, you know, and this is what a man should be. This is how a man should act. And the danger is, what if that image that media, entertainment, politics, the news, the church, the schools are portraying as what a real man is, what if that's completely poisonous and toxic to you as a real man? And I'm suggesting that it is. Or rather that letting them define what a real man is to you, that's, that's too dangerous. That's too toxic. That'll lead to this terrible trap where the man is running around and trying to serve the interests and the needs of these larger, more powerful interests. And they are not aligned with his interests. As a matter of fact, they are aligned against his interests. And this is why for the last 40 years, 
the average income of the middle class family in America and in other industrialized countries, it hasn't really risen up very much. But the profits of corporations and companies and governments, largely government officials, um, yeah, they're doing great. You know, <laughs> they've just they've risen with the times. Their profits have risen by about four or five hundred percent. Average family, not so much. Maybe about five or six percent. Nowhere near, you know, what inflation has done. So you're working harder today for less than a man 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And it will continue on that way if we don't, you know, if you don't get a hold of it and recognize what's going on and correct it, it it'll continue on just that way for you individually as well. So that's what, you know, MGTOW is about, right? It's about, you know, giving this awareness, giving this insight to the individual man so that he can find his own way, so that he can go his own way and not be trapped by this larger, moneyed, powerful interests, you know, which are using women, and so that he can define his own life, find the things that are important to him, and pursue them, and have a life, you know, that's meaningful to himself, that has value to himself. So, with that, please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.